or at a sham bungalow at a country house near Hapu Tail, in the Badala district Sri Lanka. At present, it houses the Adisham Monastery of St. Benedict. It has a relic, a chip of a bone, of St. Sylvester at the Chapel 1. The house was built in 1931 by an English aristocrat and planter Sir Thomas Villers, former chairman of George Stoy Art CO, a trading and estate agency based in Colombo. Sir Thomas was a grandson of Lord John Russell and descendant of the Dukes of Bedford. Named after Adisham, it was designed by R. Booth and F. Webster in Tudor and Jacobean style, on 10 acres, 40,000 square meters, of land. Adisham Hall played host to many prominent personalities of the colony until the retirement of Sir Thomas, after which it was sold to Sadawat Mills in 1949. In 1961 it was purchased by the Roman Catholic Church and was subsequently converted to a monastery. The house is well preserved along with its period fittings and furniture, and is open to visitors. Sir Thomas was always aware of his responsibilities and thus was in touch with the directors at of George Stewart's until his very last days. In the late 50s Sir Thomas wrote a letter to the Wages Commission mentioning that it was very necessary to introduce weekly wages in Ceylon. After enjoying a healthy and a vigorous life Sir Thomas Villers passed away on December 21, 1959. The funeral service took place at St. Paul's Knightsbridge while the cremation was held at Pulary Vale. Lady Villers also died in London in 1964 at the age of 60. The Villers presence in Ceylon concluded but their pleasant memories and the life story is carved in every stone that holds up the Adisham Bungalow in Hapu Tail. St. Benedict's Monastery at Adisham Bungalow. It was while he was chairman of George Stoy Arts that Sir Thomas commenced building his dream home in the country. He selected a peaceful site at Hapu Tail, surrounded by beautiful forest called Tangamala which means Golden Hills. The piece of land was alienated because of its 5,000 feet elevation. Yet it was not a barrier for Sir Thomas. A road was cut through the forest to pave the way to reach the land which commanded views across hills and valleys and the highest mountain ranges of Ceylon. On a clear day, a sightseer will be privileged to view Totapalekonda, Kakala, Pijaruthalagala, the Uda Puselawa range of mountains known as the Sleeping Warrior, Diatalawa Army Camp, Namunukula and numerous other mountains which stretch out for miles on end. The building and garden are on 10 acres on land which formed a part of the forest reserve. Cutting the site in preparation for the building commenced in 1929, maintenance of the monastery and those who reside here has to be met with funds that are earned by the monks themselves. Hence the jam products and the produce from the farm. Maintenance of the monastery garden which retains its old English charm, with well-preserved lawns, beautiful flower beds, evergreens, and majestic trees, is also a costly affair, and is managed by funds collected at the gate, and is therefore not a mere commercial venture. Visitors are welcome to visit the monastery from 9 am to 4 pm. Only on the weekends, Saturday, Sunday, and Poya days and public holidays, except Good Friday and Christmas Day, what is accessible to visitors is only a limited area. Me tries. Super faster. All over the sky.